at the tight end of the spectrum. What is going on everyone? Today we are back at Driven and as you know, we're still waiting for parts to arrive for the K24 engine build. In the meantime, we're gonna work on the differential and today we're gonna put in the OS Geekin LSD, clutch type LSD with the Gretti differential cover. All right, so lucky for us, we already have the differential out of the car, so what we're gonna do now is just take it apart, pull out the stock Torsen LSD, and we are going to use the 4.1 stock uh, ring gear. Now, I kind of went back and forth on this because we're doing the K24 Turbo, and perhaps we want something uh, of a shorter gear for the final drive, so like a 3.9 or a 3.7. But because we are going with the DCT, I figured the shifts are gonna be fast um, and doing the calculations for what I need the top speed to be. The 4.1 is serviceable, and I think it'll be good enough for the first iteration of this build, and it saves us a lot of effort in trying to source a different ring and pinion for uh, Toyota. Let's get the stock pumpkin off of the stand and onto the table and crack it open. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just take the diff cover off, and it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts on the cover, and then we'll just probably have to pry it off with a screwdriver or something like that. got the stock diff cover off here looking pretty clean you can see the inside of the diff with the Torsen LSD I'm just gonna have to clean up some of that extra diff fluid that was still inside and then we'll get to the disassembly all right so one thing that Toyota does do from factory is that you see these retaining clips on these bolts that prevent the bolts from backing out so it's actually a really nice safety feature we're actually not gonna be reusing these for the OS Geek and Diff, so we're just gonna peel these tabs back so we can pop these bolts off and uh, yeah, spin through the ring to be able to pop off all of them. All the tabs peeled off now we're pretty much close to removing the stock LSD one thing you do have to take care of is much like a engine build with the bearing caps the caps are matched so you don't want to mess up which ones which so caps I'm talking about are these two right here so this one here and this one here with the two bolts on each side keeping it in just like basically a, a main cap in, in a crankshaft if you were doing an engine build. So we're just gonna find a Sharpie and mark these so that we know exactly where they go afterward. All right, so there we go. We've got paint mark on both of the caps just so that we know that slide's left, that side's right. And uh, we'll go from there. Make sure you also know which side is top orientation. So in case you get the whole thing flipped upside down, you still know which side goes where. All right, so now that the end caps are off, we are going to shimmy this out, pry it out. There's gonna be a little bit of force to be able to get this LSD out of the carrier itself. There it is. The stock LSD. Okay, now as I mentioned, we are gonna be using the stock 4.1 gear and pinion. So what we need to do is now remove the ring gear off of the stock LSD and put that on the OS Geek in one. So this bad boy right here needs to come off. There's a bunch of bolts. That's what we were prying those uh, lock tabs off of. And I think we're also, after the bolts come off, we're probably gonna to need to pry this off as well. All right, we're just gonna move the housing out of the way for now to create a little bit more space. You see on the inside, the ring gear, or sorry, the um, pinion gear, right at the end there. Okay, so now that we have the ring gear off, we're just gonna go clean this off with some parts cleaner and then Reset it up again before we put it in new, just so that we make sure that there's no small debris in there. Like, you know, it is a very tight clearance and 
you don't want anything to get caught in the new bearings after reinstalling this thing. All right, so we're just gonna pack the old one away and open up the new one from OS Geekin. All right, opening this up, get some nice stickers. And let's take the unit really well packaged because it's, it's such a heavy thing like in shipment if they don't package it like this it's so heavy that it can probably just tumble around into the hole in the box itself all right now before i put the oem lst away you'll notice another difference between the two like the body size are pretty much the same obviously the torsen has a very um trick gear set on the inside versus the clutch packs in the clutch type LST of the OS Geekin. The other thing that we do need to do is we're gonna actually have to replace, um, well actually install new bearings to the OS Geekin clutch LSD because they don't come with them stock. Now you can get these obviously from the dealer so we just got new ones and we're just gonna press them in with this press over here. Lucky for us we got the right tools for the right job. So the next thing to do is we're gonna put the old gear onto the new diff. Now, the main thing you gotta watch out for is you gotta get these holes lined up with the uh, holes in the diff body there. And because it's gonna be a really tight fit, you're probably gonna need the rubber mallet again just to be able to press that on there. Okay, so here, here's the funny thing, the hardest Part of this build so far has actually been getting this stupid gear ring to line up with the holes properly. So you see here, there's uh, obviously there's threaded holes on the gear itself, and then these holes with the diff body. How to get it? Try to had to try to do this a few times to get it to line up correctly. And what I found was if you use one of the housing bolts, which are actually the same thread as the the uh, gear bolts itself. They're a little bit longer, so you can get them lined up before the ring is pressed. And just put one here, one here, and then drive the ring home. Uh, you'll be sure that the uh, the threads are, are lined up correctly, and then we can go ahead with these uh, ring bolts to get this tightened up again. And when installing these as a precaution, because we're not gonna use the OEM uh, locking tabs anymore, we're gonna throw on some lock tight on these threads. So we've got our bearings pressed on and we are cleaned up on the face for where the gasket's gonna go. And now we are gonna get into reassembly. So the first thing you need to do is just these shims that came uh, with the OE diff, put them in to both sides. Oh, <laughs> the other one's already in here. Okay, cool. And then it's a bit of a balancing act, so it's gonna be hard for me to record this, but basically we put the bearings on there like so on both sides, and we're just gonna slide it in to the carrier and might have to tap it a little bit with the mallet and get a wood block so you don't uh, damage any of the surfaces. And then afterward, we will check the lash and make sure that that is in spec. We are all set with putting the 
LSD, the new LSD, the OS Geiken, OS Geeken LSD into the carrier. When we can check that it's bottom out just to make sure that everything is smack dab centered and it looks pretty good on this side here. So we'll just flip it around and take a look on the other side as well. All right, now we're gonna move on to reinstalling the caps. So remember which ones goes where based off of markings. It's good to give this a clean, uh, you can see there's like quite a bit of debris on there and then also put a little bit of grease on there afterward as well so that uh, there's a little bit of lubrication. Just finished tightening up the ring gear on the OS Geek and Differential. And to be honest, this was kind of painful to do. The best way that I figured out how to do this and just browsing YouTube on how other people did it is basically just get the diff onto the ground. So we have the differential on the ground here and you basically just get the beefiest screwdriver that you can, thread it through the hole at the end of the uh, drive shaft adapter. And you basically just put a foot on it and grab the torque wrench and go to town. One piece of advice, just mark the bolts after you torque them. I mean, later on you can tell if you ever take the cover off to see if anything's loosened up, but at the same time, as you're tightening things, it just helps to make sure that once you've completed a full revolution, you already know that you've done uh, the previous ones before. One of the things that you have to take care of when you are doing this job of replacing your differential is to check the gear latch after you make your installation. So if I move the ring gear, you can kind of hear that tiny bit of a clunk and that's movement between the pinion and the gear ring just to tell you how tight it is. Usually we want this to be a fairly tight fit but not too tight so it's kind of like a Goldilocks problem if you will. So the reason why you don't want it to be too tight where it's completely binding against each other is that it'll accelerate the wear and at the same time if it's too loose then you'll experience too much of lash when you're trying to get started from a stop or switching gears etc etc you'll feel that jolt in the rear end. So the spec for Toyota for the FRS is about 5,000, so we have it zeroed out the indicator at this point. And when we move, we are, you know, if I accurately zeroed this out, it is just at five thousandths. And the spec is five to seven thousandths from factory, so we are perfectly at the tight end of the spectrum, uh, which is kind of what I wanted. So now that we have the lash set correctly, we are going to check the mesh between the gear and the pinion by using some marking paint uh, to see the type of pattern that will be put onto the drive and the coast side of the ring gear. All right, so this is AC Delco gear making, gear marking compound. Just gotta channel your inner Bob Ross with the paintbrush. And from what I've seen online is you wanna just mark maybe you know, four of these teeth, both the coast and the drive side. You don't wanna make it too thick, such that you won't be able to see the markings afterward. It's pretty sticky stuff. When doing the gears, see we've painted it now, both sides, the coast and the drive side, you do want to add a little bit of uh, resistance onto the pinion uh, when we spin the gear. So that way it just simulates that there's some load on it and you want to roll it forward and back to get the, both the coast and the drive side. Just remember to exert pressure or get somebody to help you to exert pressure on the back while you try to spin the front. Okay, so in assessing this wear on the markings, what we can kind of see is that uh, the top of the gear, uh, which is uh, and the bottom of the gear, the face and the flank, the pattern is actually fairly centered on that, despite it being slightly towards the inside when you consider the heel and the toe, or the toe and the heel, I can't remember which one's which, but you know, it's slightly skewed towards the inside, but in terms of the depth of the marking, it's actually quite centered on the flank and the face, so I think this is good enough to seal up. 
Now to make this diff even flashier, we do have this Greddy diff cover. And the reason we went with the Greddy diff cover is to increase the uh, fluid capacity of the diff, which in turn will actually help with the cooling. And what's really cool is that they have these bungs already in the cover here for essentially running a cooling system if you want to run a uh, pump and a uh, air to fluid cooler you can do that and there's also a bung in the back right here for a temperature probe as well now if you're not using those of course they give you the um, covers that to be able to just like plug it up with some teflon uh, but this is going to be a really nice piece and i'm really excited to slap it on there So we have just put the cover on hand tight and yeah Permatex the gasket sealer says hand tight for the first hour and then torque inspect so that's what we'll do give some time for the gasket to set and then tighten it all up and I think that's gonna do it for this episode we have a fully assembled differential now with the OS Geek and Diff very excited to get that into the FRS and see what that's gonna feel like this summer when we take it out onto the track. Really hoping for better acceleration out of the corner. I think that's where the stock tours and differential kind of let you down that you could always feel in some corners it wasn't giving you all the torque that it really can. And you had the grip too to, to kind of send the car a little bit harder on the exits but the diff just didn't really want to lock and give you that push. So call it for this one. Thanks for joining us. We're glad you can make it and we will catch you on the next one. Take care.